Oh boy, do we have a doozy today. We're heading to the Texas Panhandle. Now I know some of y'all are thinking, yeah, that'll be the day. But hold on there, Peggy Sue. Maybe, baby, this is the day trip for you. One that you wish could be every day, even if you're not a Red Raider. So let's rave on to Guns Up. Wait, no, oh, Lubbock. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Lubbock sits near the base of the Panhandle. Six hours from the Alamo, six from the Capitol, four and a half from the Stockyards, but it's only two from its biggest neighbors of Midland and Amarillo. As you trip to this metropolis, you'll notice that the ground around here is pretty flat. Okay, really flat, as Lubbock sits atop the vast Llano Estacado Prairie. But you can't always judge a place just by what's above ground. All right, guys, we made it to town. Uh, what town, man? There's nothing here. Huh? Guys, I never said we were going to People Town. It's Prairie Dog Town. Hey, I said it was a Texas prairie, and that means prairie dogs, living in one of Lubbock's most active communities right here in McKenzie Park. You can't see it because it's just below the surface, but Prairie Dog Town is as advanced as People Town, just without like electricity and running water and little things like that. But they actually live in a very intricate network of rooms and tunnels. But the best part of coming to Prairie Dog Town, these things are stinking cute. Oh, just look at them. So cute and cuddly. I just want to kiss them and hug them and love them forever. <laughs> That's fighting over there. Look, they're having a boxing match. Maybe this is better reserved for shows like Nature. <laughs> Maybe, but it is fun bonding with nature out here. And these guys are pretty friendly. Hey, little buddy, we're not from around here. Where should we go for lunch? Oh, your burrow. You sure you have enough nuts and berries for the whole crew? Okay, we'll be right down. <laughs> okay, so this isn't exactly our day's destination. And Lubbock People Town is just down the road. A few blocks in and you'll quickly realize this ain't no small town, but a booming High Plains hub of activity that's over 200,000 strong, not including Lubbock's most transient and most read residents of Texas Tech University. Now, I know some day trippers may be collegiately and completely opposed to stepping on campus, but trust me, the Spanish architecture and the landmarks on campus make it well worth it. So here's one of Tech's biggest landmarks. It's a statue of cowboy funny man Will Rogers on his favorite horse, Soap Suds. Now when they installed him, they were supposed to point Will riding directly into the sunset. But instead, they moved him just a few degrees, facing him directly away from Texas A&M. And what that means is that old Soap Suds nether regions right on the money. No need for a compass, folks. College Station is that a way. <laughs> now before each home football game, students come out and they wrap Will and Soap Suds from head to toe in red crepe paper. You should see it. It is awesome. I wonder if they wrap anything else here on campus. Come on! Seems they don't take too kindly to Longhorns around here. Better keep moving. Okay, so here's another landmark. It's a chunk of rock, but it says it's a piece of the Blarney Stone. But what's the Blarney Stone? Hey, you've never heard of the Blarney Stone? It's only the most famous and powerful stone in all of Ireland. Some say it was the rock Moses struck in the desert to bring forth water. Others say it was a gift given by Robert the Bruce after victory at Bodoc Burn but the Blarney Stone now hangs off the side of Blarney Castle in Ireland, and all those that brave a kiss will be given the priceless gift of the gab. Wait, but how did this chunk end up here? 
engineers, Chet. They found it in a field nearby, and it just so happens that this piece is identical to one missing from the Blarney Stone in Ireland. A single kiss, Chet, and eloquent speech will be yours forever. Whoa, where did he go? Oh, ah, uh, I guess I could use eloquent speech. Here goes nothing. That was nice, but I don't feel any different. What are you laughing at? Oh no, oh no, listen to me. He's cursed me with the tongue of an Irishman. Curse you, you fiendish lad. Oh, lift the curse. Oh, the humanity. Oh, Danny boy, where are you? Oh dear, cursed forever. Well, what do tech students do to wash away bad things, be it? Bad exams, bad memories, or just really bad Irish accents. <coughs> well, they head across the street to Spanky's. And it's been therapeutically guaranteed to work for over 30 years. Whether you're looking for a beverage, a nice smack on the bottom, or it's epically legendary fried cheese. All right, so this is Lisa West, the owner of Spanky's. So are you Spanky? <laughs> I guess officially you could call me that. Yeah, that's what we call the dog. This is Spanky, you know. And Spanky the dog loves fried cheese, I assume. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so y'all's fried cheese is legendary. But what is it about that cheese? Well, I think a lot of it's just the simplicity of it, but we have um, large blocks of mozzarella and, you know, we hand cut all of the cheese sticks and then they're laying there fresh when you order, nothing is pre-battered. It's a different texture on, you know, when you fresh batter it, right. it makes a big and difference. And then the, the strings just go on for miles. Right, yeah. yeah, exactly. So they put something in this, is it addicting? Yes, it is addicting. Oh. Yes, I don't know what it is, but it's something very bad for you. <laughs> it's so good for you, okay? So bad, yet yeah, so good. Daughter's going through looking at tech. My wife and I both went here. So you've got to Always been here. show your daughter the real tech experience and that yeah. includes Spanky's. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You think the fried cheese sealed the deal? Uh, possibly. 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 Yeah. Yeah. You have to get the fried cheese no matter what. That's a meal in itself, but then there's dessert, which is the hamburger, chicken sandwich, whatever you're getting from there. <laughs> That's your dessert. It's a Spanky style dessert. Oh yeah. They do serve other food here. And it's about as epic as the cheese. That is, if you have any stomach room left. This is truly a tech institution, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm really proud of that. Generation after generation. Yeah. And how yeah. long is Spanky's going to be here? Forever. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Spanky's has left a lasting mark on the hearts of its customers, both in the poetic sense and in the very literal artery blocking sense. But man, is this stuff worth it? All right, so we've talked so much about Texas tech traditions. Now it's time to partake in an edible one. Look at that. Spanky's homemade fried cheese. You get six sticks and these things are huge. You know, food doesn't get more indulgent than this right here. This is the greatest cheese I've ever eaten in my life. And I've eaten a lot of cheese. It doesn't taste like any fried cheese I've ever had. It tastes more like a grilled cheese sandwich, but without any bread, just this little bit of crispy around the outside. I could seriously polish off all six sticks, no problem. But I do have a sandwich coming. <laughs> Look at this. I clearly underestimated the chicken sandwich. I thought like, you know, go with something a little lighter. No way. It's a beast. Mushrooms, Swiss, and green chilies on it. Mm -mm -mm. You know, some people may say um, chicken sandwiches are for the ladies, but I tell you, there ain't nothing dainty about this chicken sandwich right here. And this lunch will more than do it. Now, as you probably guessed, there's tons of great food in Lubbock. But unfortunately, some of its most famous food only lives on in memory. So you've probably heard of Stubbs Barbecue in Austin, or you've seen Stubbs Sauce in stores. Well, the original joint was right here in Lubbock. Stubbs Old Fashioned Barbecue. It's set right here on this concrete pad where Mr. Christopher B. Stubblefield Sr. cooked barbecue for one and all. Here's a statue of him. He was famous for his smoked meats, but his impact that he made on Texas music was probably even greater than his barbecue. The floor is still littered with pieces of that little white building where Stubb gave Texas musicians a chance to play for their supper and launch their careers. Musical legends like Stevie Ray Vaughan, Joe Ely, Muddy Waters, and Willie Nelson played from this small stage here on the side. Stubbs Barbecue was instrumental in fostering the Lubbock music scene, so much so that musician Terry Allen made this statue in his honor. 
and the name of this humble cook now adorns the wall of the West Texas Walk of Fame, along with some other very, very famous musicians. If you want to talk Texas music, or rock and roll music at all for that matter, you're going to have to mention one name. He's got a legend so big it will definitely not fade away, and he hails from right here in the Hub City, Lubbock's own Buddy Holly. We now interrupt this programming to remind you to like and subscribe. Now back to the road. Few in history have been as musically influential or iconic as Buddy Holly. The glasses, the smile, and definitely the songs. The Buddy Holly Center stands as a lasting memorial to one of Lubbock's own who reached well beyond its borders. This is Jacqueline Bober, the center's curator. This is absolutely incredible. So tell me a little bit about how this center came to be. Um, the center opened in September of 1999. The artifacts came from many generous individuals who donated these items to form the kernel of the collection. Like missing pieces of a puzzle, things are slowly coming back to Lubbock and we're able to make a more complete picture of the Buddy Holly that grew up here in Lubbock. What do you think it is the, about him specifically that has made his legacy so strong. But his music, I think, speaks across generations. Very simple melodies, very heartfelt words. I think many people can identify with the emotional undertones in that music. His career spanned all of 18 months, his professional career. And in that career, he wrote well over 60 songs, many of which topped the charts, some in his lifetime, some after. From his first chart topper, that'll be the day with the crickets, to the foot stomping Peggy Sue, to the chilled out every day, the list raves on and on and on. Wow, I mean, look at this display. You know, as famous as Buddy became and as big as his legend is, at one point he was just a kid from Lubbock. And here are some of his boyhood artifacts, like his baseball mitt and then his Converse high tops that he wore in high school. Look at this, it's a jacket that Buddy wore on stage performing. And then down here, some of his suede shoes. I'll tell you, the stuff in this museum is truly just like one of a kind stuff. As Buddy skyrocketed to the top of the musical world, on February 3rd, 1959, his life was cut short in a plane crash, along with Richie Valens and the Big Bopper. So this is Buddy's 1958 Stratocaster. It's the one he played on his last tour, the last guitar Buddy ever touched. It was on the bus to meet him at the next stop of the Winter Dance Party Tour. But of course, Buddy didn't survive to make it there. Never strummed it again. What could Buddy have accomplished had he lived on? Well, the world will never know. But what we do know is that no matter what day, what time, what mood you're in, Buddy's music is still here to pick you up. And without it, we may have never had the thousands of musical artists who have been inspired by Buddy's work, many of whom are commemorated here in the center's art gallery. Yes, Buddy may have only been with us for a short time, but his music is truly timeless. And the craziest thing about it is that everything he accomplished, he did by the time he was 22 years old. Meaning, I am way too far behind all right, crew, if we're ever gonna catch up to Buddy Holly, we gotta get in the studio. I got glasses for everybody, okay? Can y'all play any instruments, like spoons, your knee, maybe a guitar, that'd be awesome. Y'all yeah, are play. the only band I got, though. Okay, can we do this? Can do we got this. All right, All right, let's go! From the first moment Chet and the Trippers hit the studio, things didn't go as planned. It's in G. Plagued by an insatiable hunger for fame and what can only be described as total musical ignorance, the band never actually recorded anything. One, two, three. Now that is how you should play the bass. Chronic perfectionism, lack of vision, and lack of talent ultimately led to their downfall. Syncopation! Syncopation! But as they say, sometimes the brightest stars burn out the fastest. Turns out, it's really hard to be a rock and roll icon. Oh well, day trip back on. I think we're probably better at this anyway. So rock and roll music dates back to the 1950s, but for Lubbock, that's modern times. Our next stop predates that by about, oh, 
12,000 years. This is the Lubbock Lake Landmark. As you'll quickly notice, there's no lake here today. Now they tried to build one in the 1930s, but instead they uncovered one of the most important archeological sites in the new world. And who better to explain than archeologist Dr. Stance Hurst. What makes the Lubbock Lake Landmark so important is that no matter what time you go back in prehistory, water was always here and so then people always came back. That's right, water is life, water brought animals, animals brought people and... Exactly. In 1936, a couple of young boys found a Folsom projectile point on the, uh, the dredge pile and that's where the site began. And so this was the proof that people had been here long before we thought. Yes, it proved that people were here at the end of the last ice age with all these different animals that we have no longer here today. Like if you look back at this mural here, we have mammoth, we have camels, um, we had bears, short-faced bear. Wow. And we have a continuous record from 12,000 years up to the historic time here at the Lubbock Lake Landmark. It was a very different time for these people. Man lived amongst beasts. Food was killed and processed, all by hand with stone tools. Now that's the epitome of working for your dinner. So you guys are still learning stuff every day yes, about these people. Yes, we're continuing excavation today and for the foreseeable future. Work that's going on even as we visit today. All right, so we're getting a behind the scenes of an actual dig site here with Catherine Ehlers. So tell me a little bit about the work you guys are doing here. Well, we open for about six weeks every year in July and August, and we come down and excavate. We work in one meter by one meter units. We're looking for these ancient bison kills. We have a series of ancient bison kills in this area. And so the surface they're working on is actually about 10,000 years old. So you can see the different sediment layers and they just progressively get older and older as you go back in time, as you go lower down. That's cool. So what's like the holy grail to find out here? In, in this particular area, if we found what we call a diagnostic point, plain view era feature, if we found a plain view projectile point, like we would all just <laughs> like shut down and have a party. Party, so. yeah. <laughs> this place would be nuts. And we're actually coming down onto our next feature. So today we've had a lot of stuff come up and everybody's really excited. Wow, so. cool. That, that is exciting. Pieces of bison bone, 10,000 years old and preserved in clay. With a little bit of imagination and the incredible trail system here, you can almost see the bears, giant armadillos, and bison twice the size of modern ones coexisting with people here at this site. Now, if your imagination runs really wild, you can even see the lake. Cannonball! But then reality hits, along with some really hard ground. So if you're looking for a real lake in Lubbock, well then you gotta head east to a place where the high plains fall away and beautiful canyons emerge all around Buffalo Springs Lake. This spring-fed lake feeds the souls of water-hungry panhandlers because we all need some water time refreshment, especially on hot day trips. Yeah, most people don't see this one coming. A beautiful lake nestled in a canyon in the high plains? But yeah, that's why they call it the Oasis of West Texas. So let's go swimming. I am powerless to resist. And so is the crew. You know, it's just shameful how much fun two grown men can have with a waterproof camera and a beach ball. Ah! You know, the big misconception is that the panhandle is nothing but flat, dry, and boring. But look around. You tell me this is flat, dry, and boring. No way. You know, but rather than just lounge around here on the beach, there's a rite of passage out here at Buffalo Springs Lake. Let's go jump off the tower. The tower. Bum, bum, bum. A breathtaking, death-defying, 12 to 15-ish feet above water level. A plunge that gives you much more than an adrenaline rush. It gives you bragging rights. Will we survive? Yes. So you could probably find taller things to jump off of, but you'd be hard pressed to find anything more momentous. And you definitely won't here in Lubbock. <laughs> and now that we've survived, how about we head back toward campus for some hard earned dinner? So you want a pizza, 
Well, I know a guy. Oh, you in a cow zone? Yeah, I got a guy. Oh, you want some of the best Italian food in Texas? I definitely have a guy. You see, there's this one guy, and he's from Italy, and his restaurant's called One Guy From Italy. Let's go inside. Ask anyone who's lived in Lubbock for the past 40 years, and they'll tell you about one guy. Then they'll keep telling you, and keep telling you. Because once you're a member of this family, you'll want to share the love. My family loves this place. My kids come here now. Well, I mean, and I've been coming here since I was a sophomore in high school. Dario knows me. We go to church together. He knows my son's name. It's like they're a family, but also all of these people are yes. family too. And there's just such a great atmosphere here. I mean, everyone comes over after class. We come and hang out here. We get our pizza. So what are you having here? I'm having a calzone. A the calzone, calzone, right? I hear the best calzone in Texas. Anywhere, bar none. Because it's the best calzone ever. Homemade dough, lots of cheese, Italian sausage, just enough pepperoni, okay. and then the juices. <laughs> the natural juices. <laughs> it's the best in the world, it really is. The best in the world is the common opinion. Now it's time to see just who this one guy is. All right, so I'm looking for this one guy. I hear he makes the best calzone in Texas. You know him? Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> the one guy is my Uncle Jerry. My Uncle Jerry and my father came from Italy, and they chose to come to Lubbock to start a business. And their goal was actually, hopefully, to make it through the first month to pay their bills. It just took off after that. <laughs> Four years later, and here we are today. Very good. Now, I notice your accent. Is that West Lubbock or East Lubbock? Uh, actually, North. <laughs> Northern North United States, <laughs> New Jersey. Yeah, so how did you end up back in the pizza business down here? I came back to my roots. Yeah. You know, my family, we started out in New York and we made our way out to Lubbock and I followed suit. You know, cool. family's here, so I'm here. Family tradition that's much thicker than the dough and much deeper than the sauce pot. We make everything by hand, the dough by hand. The recipes are actually from my grandmother. Everything was a pinch of this, a handful of this, a punch of this, <laughs> double fist. It really was kind of fun to decipher them. Only four people know them. Yeah, we will not share the recipes with anybody. Well, hey, I, don't let the secret out. Yeah, the family recipes are secret, but the family love is not. We care about every customer that comes in here like their family because we want people to walk in here, and if that was your last few bucks, we want you to feel like I definitely got my money's worth. Well, it's time to get my own money's worth and join this one guy family. All right, so here we have one guy from Italy's house calzone. Pounds of cheese, Italian sausage, pepperoni, and then some of their house homemade sauce. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's really good. Perfect crusty dough. Just the right amount of sauce to where the whole thing doesn't turn into a big sloppy mess. I don't care if you're a Texas Tech fan or not. You need to come up here for a Tech game just so you can come to one guy and eat this calzone. But I'm gonna go ahead and say it. This is the best calzone in Texas right here. That's right, I said it. And it would make a great sign-off salute to this day in Lubbock. However, there's still one last salute we have to make, and that is to the stars and stripes of Lubbock's drive-in movie theater. All right. Let's go get some popcorn before the movie starts. It's truly an all-American experience. And while this drive-in is barely a decade old, they're doing things the classic way. A playground for the kids, a 50s diner for everybody, with real food. So, bust out your lawn chair, grab yourself a chihuahua sandwich, I'll have to tell you about those later, and get ready to transport away from the high plains to the magical world of the movies. Drive-in style. What a day. At the intersection of creativity, food, ancient history, and deep traditions, you'll find the hub city with it all. And it's about time the world discovered what the Red Raiders have known all along. There are high times to be had in the high plains, and it all happens in Lubbock. All right, guys, I got us some popcorn, some right, drinks. Right, Here right, we right, go. Right, right. All right. So, guys, I think you'll agree that this is one awesome way to polish off a day in Lubbock. So I'll see all y'all out on the road. Bye, con Dios, amigos. All right, where am I sitting? Where am I sitting? Make some room, make some room. All right, oh yeah, nice and comfy. So rock and roll dates back to the 1950s, but for, but, but, but. <laughs> hey, little fella. Yeah, we just got to town. Where should we? Now, Christopher B. Stubblefield was a cook. He was also a veteran. He loved this place and I'm rambling now. Oh, you in a cow zone? Yeah, I know a guy too. 
So say you want, oh, say. Go ahead, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> and why are you like that? Because we're in a golf cart made for four, so okay. I'm the fifth wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Howdy, y'all. Follow along with my adventures at Chet Tripper on Instagram and at the Day Tripper TV on Facebook and YouTube. Or head to thedaytripper.com for travel guides, past episodes, and info on our mobile app and Team Day Tripper. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Howdy, y'all. Chet the Day Tripper here. Thanks so much for tripping with us. Uh, remember, while you're here, like this video, subscribe to our channel so that we can stay out there on the road and keep on tripping. <laughs> Did we miss anything in this town? Leave us a comment, let us know. We love finding out about new stops with all your tips. And if you love Epic Texas Day Trips, remember to check our channel. We got a lot of them on there. Also, don't forget, if you want some sweet Day Tripper merch or another cool Texas made product, Come see us in Georgetown at the Day Tripper World Headquarters. You can also shop online if you check the link down there in the caption. All right, y'all. Bye, con Dios, amigas.